Greetings! For Women's History Month, I wanted to spotlight this book that I have. It is called Out of Wonder, Poems Celebrating Poets. Now, this was a collaboration project. It was by Kwame Alexander with Chris Calderly and Marjorie Wentworth. And so in this book, they celebrate um, and write poems about some phenomenal poets. So today, I wanted to talk about a few of the female poets that they featured in this book. The reason that I'm featuring this book this week is because I wanted to spotlight some amazing illustrators. Now, this illustrator, Ikua Holmes, is phenomenal. Looking at this spread, it's absolutely gorgeous, as well as all of the other spreads in this book. So the first one I am going to be reading about is Miss Nikki Giovanni. She was born in 1943. Yolanda Cornelia, Nikki Giovanni Jr., grew up in Lincoln Heights, Ohio, but spent many summers in Knoxville, Tennessee, where she was born. It was those summers with her grandparents that fostered an ear for and a lifelong love of storytelling. During the 1960s, Giovanni attended Fisk University in Nashville. The university was undergoing an African-American cultural renaissance at the time. And as editor of the campus literary magazine, she was part of that. With the publication of her first book of poetry, Black Feeling, Black Talk, Giovanni became one of the leading voices of the Black arts movement. Her first three books of poetry were successful and helped create a large audience for her work. Her poetry expresses a pride in African-American culture, as well as love, for family and friends. Nikki Giovanni is the author of more than 15 books of poetry and a dozen children's books. She has taught at a number of colleges and universities, including Virginia Tech, Ohio State, and Rutgers. Giovanni's work is notable for its wonderful use of metaphor and simile, its attention to history and contemporary culture, and its fiery energy and wit. Her strong sense of the oral tradition of poetry, along with her frankness and natural charisma, have made her a popular poet throughout the United States. She has received numerous honors and awards for her work, including the City College of New York Langston Hughes Award, the Rosa Parks Women of Courage Award, three NAACP Image Awards for Literature, a National Book Award finalist selection, a National Association of Radio and Television Announcers Award for Best Spoken Word Album, and more than 20 honorary degrees. Wow. And that was just her bio. Now, let's get into Nikki Giovanni's poem. Snapshots, celebrating Nikki Giovanni. This one was written by Chris Calderly. People forget. Poetry is not just words on a page. It is a snowflake on your tongue, a tattoo on the inside of your arm, a dashiki and a kaftan, tripping down the streets of Lincoln Heights, shouting from the hills of Knoxville, Tennessee. Poetry is barbecue, cotton candy, purple skin beats from daddy's garden, blues, the Birdland Jazz Club, Sunday morning gospel, chasing justice, freedom. Poetry is remembering the things that matter, the ones you love. When night comes softly, like ripples on a pond. Poetry is remembering the things that matter, the ones you love when night comes softly, like ripples on a pond. The next poet I wanna talk about is Maya Angelou. Many people are very familiar with her. Let's give a little blurb about her. She was born in 1928 and died in 2014. Maya Angelou's extraordinary life is a testament to the power of endurance. She was born in a segregated rural area of St. Louis, Missouri, but she spent long periods of time in the rural South with her grandmother in Stamps, Arkansas. Her childhood was particularly different. 
Her childhood was particularly difficult, having been abused at the age of seven. In 1940, Angelou moved to San Francisco, where she graduated from high school at 16 and gave birth to a son at 17. She began dancing lessons for a career in theater and became the city's first female African-American streetcar conductor. She continued acting and performing off and on throughout her life. Angelou recounts her life as a dancer touring Europe in the cast of Porgy and Bess in the third volume of her autobiography, Singing and Swinging and Getting Merry, Little Christ- Merry Like Christmas. In the late 1950s, she joined the Harlem Writers Guild and became involved with the American Civil Rights Movement. In the early 1960s, she lived and worked overseas, first in Cairo, then in Ghana, where she was a writer and an editor for the African Review. She was among the cast members of the historic television miniseries Roots in the late 1970s. Altogether, Maya Angelou wrote six autobiographies. The first book, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, became a bestseller. She also wrote several volumes of poetry, including Oh, Pray My Wings Are Going to Fit Me Well in 1975 and Still I Rise in 1978, I Shall Not Be Moved in 1990, and The Complete Collected Poems of Maya Angelou in 1994. Her poems are admired for their inspirational and motivational messages. In addition, she is an author of several books for children as well as collections of essays. In 1993, she recited a her poem, On the Pulse of Mourning, at President Bill Clinton's inauguration. Over the years, she has received numerous honors and awards, including more than 50 honorary degrees from colleges and universities. She received the National Medal of Arts in 2000, and in 2011 was presented with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. When Maya Angelou passed away in 2014, she received tributes from Oprah Winfrey, President Barack Obama, and former President Clinton among others. Majestic. Majestic. Celebrating Maya Angelou. Rise into the wonder of daybreak. Be a rainbow in the cloud. Be a free bird on the back of the night wind. Shine on, honey. Walk with joy in your golden feet over crystal seas and purpled mountains. Know your beauty is a thunder, your precious heart unsalable. Be brave like a new seed bursting with extraordinary promise. Shine on, honey. Know you are phenomenal. That was also by Kwame Alexander. Gwendolyn Brooks. As far as poets go, Gwendolyn Brooks is real cool. She was born in Kansas, but her family moved to Chicago soon after. By the time she was 16, more than 70 of her poems had been published. Her first book of poems, A Street in Bronzeville, published in 1945, exemplified the kind of rhythm, rhyme, and lyrical genius that she would be known for. Five years later, she became the first African-American to win the Pulitzer Prize in poetry for her collection, Annie Allen. Like much of her work, the poems in Annie Allen deal with social issues of the urban poor, in particular African-American women. Raised in a very socially aware family, Brooks was always sensitive to and interested in writing lyrically about the struggles and triumphs of children and families in the Chicago community. This interest, along with her stature as a poet, led her to become the literary mother of Black arts poets like Nikki Giovanni and Haki Madhubuti. Gwendolyn Brooks published 20 volumes of poetry, a novel, Maud Martha, two autobiographies, and two books for children. She was also the poet laureate of Illinois and the first African-American woman to be appointed consultant in poetry to the Library of Congress. The Gwendolyn Brooks Cultural Center at Western Illinois University and a middle school in Harvey, Illinois were named in her honor. Now, this is probably my absolute favorite spread in the whole book because it has music, a woman on piano. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Check that out. Hugh 
and cry. Celebrating Gwendolyn Brooks. Bronzeville lady, way past cool, voice like butter, melting blues. She sung low, she swung high, roused with rhyme, hue and cry. Woman black, smile like moon. Bronzeville lady, gone too soon. That was also written by Kwame Alexander. Beautiful. Gorgeous spread. Look at that. This poem is entitled, How to Write a Poem. Celebrating Naomi Shihab Nye. Hush. Grab a pencil, some paper, spunk. Let loose your heart. Raise your voice. What if I have many voices? Let them dance together, twist and turn like best friends in a maze till you find your way to that one true word or two by Kwame Alexander. The poet inside me, celebrating Sandra Cisneros. You are the little girl from Mango Street, the one with the lazy locks and an old red sweater on her desk. You are the only daughter, the traveler with dos lenguas, the one who holds Papa when he weeps. You are the fairy tales in mi vida, the words in my alphabet soup, the book in my backpack for the trip to school. You are la luna, that glows when I sleep, the poet inside me, waiting to rise like the morning sun. By Chris Colberly. Well, I hope you have enjoyed the select poems that I read from this book entitled Out of Wonder. And know that I hope you also enjoyed the illustrations by the fabulous, phenomenal illustrator, Ikoa. Homes. Until we read again, take care.